today we are talking about a pendulum question. We've already discussed in some detail vertical circles, but we've limited ourselves to what's happening at the top and what's happening at the bottom. We've not talked about what's happening at other parts of the circles. A pendulum is not actually going in a circle, as I'm sure you know, it's just swinging back and forth. But it is certainly going in sort of a curved motion, so there is a centripetal component to its motion. It's going in a circle, but we're not at the top or the bottom, so it's going to be just a little bit different from normal circular motion. The givens are up here. We've got a rope or a wire that is 80 centimeters long. The mass is 1.2 kilograms. We know it's going with a speed of 0.6 meters per second, and that currently at the moment we're interested in, the rope makes a 10 degree angle with the vertical. What is the tension in the rope? And we find the acceleration of the object, of the mass, of the ball, of the pendulum. What do we do? Of course, same old, same old. The first thing we do is draw a free body diagram. So here is my object. The rope is this way, so that will be tension. Gravity, of course, is down. Fg. Gravity's pulling it down. It's not resting on a surface, so there's no normal force. No one's pushing on it. There's a tension from the rope, which is a pull, and there's no friction, there's no air resistance. So our free body diagram is done. And that's hopefully really quite easy, but I think the problem arises now in where to define the x and y direction. And if you don't do that properly, you don't really stand much chance of getting the question right. So we have to understand that this thing is moving in a curve, which looks something like this. So it is turning, and there is some centripetal acceleration. But unlike all our other examples where things were going in circles at more or less constant velocity, we said it wasn't speeding up, it wasn't slowing down. There was no tangential acceleration. But of course, this thing is speeding up or slowing down, depending on which way it's going. It's speeding up towards the center, slowing down away from the center. Speeding up towards the center, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. So there will be two different components of acceleration. So just like always, I will make x towards the center of my circle, because that's what I normally like to do in the direction of acceleration. But that's not the only acceleration. So y is also going to be perpendicular to x, of course, but there will be some acceleration in the y direction. So the real difference here is that we don't know the direction of a. In other examples, I've said, let's just make x the direction of a, and then y, the acceleration is 0. But in this case, we can't do that because we don't know what direction that'll be. So part B is going to be a little trickier than you might expect. This is the hard part, though. Once you've got this, the question becomes pretty easy, especially part A. We just get back into our steps. Draw a free body diagram. Define the x and y direction. We've done that. Break everything into x and y components. Well, tension is already in the x direction, so the only thing we have to break up is the force of gravity. Force to gravity x direction, force of gravity in the y direction. And I'll draw that here, fgy. If this angle is 10 degrees, and so is this one, so that's not too difficult. fgx, we can work out, is going to be mg cos 10. And FGY is going to be MG sine 10. No big deal. Draw through by diagram, break it into X and Y. Break everything into X and Y components. Step four, put our Newton's laws in the X direction and the Y direction. In the X direction, we have tension is positive, FGX is negative. And since it is turning, it is going in a part of a circle. It's curving, so there will be a centripetal acceleration. So that equals MAC. In the y direction, it's speeding up. Why? Or it might be slowing down. Why? Because FGY is unbalanced. So in the y direction, FGY equals MA. Just to be clear, though, this is the y component of acceleration. So I'll call it AY. Centripetal acceleration, AC. I could call that AX. But I'm going to call it AC because that will remind me that it's centripetal. I'm going to use mv squared r. So for part A, I look over here and I say t is m b squared over r plus mg x, which is cos 10. 
r is equal to l. Because that is the radius through which this thing is turning currently. Dumping all my numbers in, I get 1.2 times 0.6 squared over 80 centimeters, which is of course 0 0.8 meters, plus 1.2 times 9.8 cos 10, which when you graph your calculator and figure it all out should give you about 12.1 newtons. And so that's the answer today, 12.1 newtons. Again, the math is simple. There's nothing really complicated here, but if you don't have this right, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Part B, we're obviously going to have to use our other Newton's Law equation, but it's not as simple as that. If we look at the other equation for part B, I'll put it up here to have a little more room, we can see that Ay equals Fgy, which is mg sine 10, over mass, so that's gone, so it's just g sine 10. And g sine 10 works out to be about 1.7 meters per second squared. If this was a test question, some of the students will say, okay, so the acceleration is 1.7. But that is only the y, the tangential component of the acceleration. There's also the centripetal acceleration, ac, which we never actually worked out, but we need to work out. We said it was v squared over r. So that's 0.6 squared divided by 0.8, and that works out to be 0.45 meters per second squared. So we've got these two components of acceleration, we need to put them together. You know how to do that, that's easy. Put the components together using the, hypo uh, the hypotenuse, the Pythagorean theorem of course. I'll make a little diagram to help myself understand. I've got the acceleration in the y direction. And I've got the centripetal acceleration. And those two are going to give me the total acceleration, A. A will, of course, be the square root of 1.7 squared plus 0 0.545 squared, which comes out to be 1.76 meters per second squared. Of course, that is just the magnitude. I also need the direction. So I need to find this angle, theta. And this angle is the inverse tan of AC, which is 0.45, over AY, which is 1.7. And that works out to be just a little bit under 15 degrees. About 15 degrees, good enough for our purposes. AY. is, if you look at this other diagram, it's about 80 degrees to the vertical. So what direction is this? It's 15 degrees from tangential to the curve, and that's very complicated sounding. But this is 80 degrees, so 15 degrees above that means that we are only 5 degrees above the horizontal. So putting it all together, I will say the actual acceleration of the object is 1.76 meters per second squared, 5 degrees above horizontal. I think I kept it all in frame there. I should probably round that to 1.8. But basically, that's everything we need.